When I was a child, a very young child, mind you, there was a cartoon TV show called The Jetsons. It was set in the distant future where they had flying cars and robots, and they swallowed pills for dinner that actually not only provided nutrition, but tasted like the entire meal. I remember they had a TV on that show that filled an entire wall. They also made phone calls on little panel devices that they held in their hands, and they could see each other while they made the telephone calls. Wow, how imaginative Hanna-Barbera was to dream up all those impossible gadgets. Now, in the 21st century, many of those are actually a reality. We certainly have television sets that can fill an entire wall, and in the last few years, we have moved to handheld devices that we can communicate with, including video. Many of us have a hard time remembering the days when a telephone was physically attached to a wall with a cord and we couldn't move more than two or three feet away from it. Today, wireless capabilities are assumed in most places. When we travel through airports, check into hotels, or visit a coffee shop, we just assume that there will be Wi-Fi access. In addition, most of us stopped trying to strain Cat5 network cables through our houses, and we utilize Wi-Fi networks instead. It's just become the expectation and the standard for most computer users. What we have to know then, as computer users, is how to connect to those wireless networks. The first thing I'm compelled to remind us is that in order for us to use wireless or Wi-Fi, we must have a wireless network adapter as part of our computer system. Now I know, these days that seems silly for our mobile devices because they're pretty much a standard. But many of our desktop computers may not have wireless by default. How do we know? Well, before Windows 8, it took a few steps, but Windows 8 makes it easy. All we have to do is display the desktop, move down to the lower right-hand edge of the taskbar, and simply give our networking icon a single left click or a tap. This displays the network's panel. The computer that I'm on does not have wireless networking capabilities, so I wanted to show you this one first. I can tell because it simply says we are connected to a network but it doesn't say anything else about Wi-Fi and some other options that I want to show you next. So if all you see is networks and connections, that tells you that you probably don't have a wireless adapter, or at least it's not configured properly. When a wireless adapter is available, we'll be presented with different options in the networking panel. For example, we'll see things like airplane mode, so we can quickly turn it on or off if we happen to be flying. We'll also see a list of all of the available wireless connections as well as the connection that we currently have. We'll probably have many networks to choose from. If we see that the last entry says hidden network, that means someone has designated for their router to not broadcast their network name and ID. There are many reasons why this seems like a good idea, but it isn't. It's really not our focus to discuss this. Just know that if we see hidden network, we can still connect to those hidden networks. We just need to know all of the information about it since it won't be displayed for us. Those networks that are not hidden will display, like we see here, with a name and also the signal strength indicator. If we pause over a network, it will tell us whether the network is secured. If it is secured, it will tell us what kind of security it has. For most of us, we don't really care about this level of detail. All we need to know is that if it is secured, because if it is, we'll need to provide a security key in order to access it. If we click or tap an available network, we will be presented with the options to connect automatically, as well as a button to actually do the connection. We should choose Connect Automatically if we will be using this network more than once. For example, if it's in our home or work, and that's the wireless connection that we'll be connecting to on a daily basis. But if not, if we happen to be in a cafe, for example, somewhere, and will most likely not return, then we do not want to check the box. Enabling this means that we don't have to go through this process each time we connect. It saves time. If the network is unsecured, when we click Connect, it will simply make the connection and will pretty much be done. If the network is secured, when we click Connect, we will be prompted to enter the security key. At home, we should know the key. If we don't, we have bigger issues to resolve. At work, our IT or network administrators, or someone they have designated, will be able to provide the key for us. After the key is entered, we can go ahead and click or tap Next. The next question has significant relevance. It asks if we want to enable sharing or not. The general rule is to say no unless we are on a home or a secured work network. In public, we do not want others to be able to search the network, find our device, and have access to our files. 
the options clearly indicate to choose no for public places and yes for home and work. After we select the appropriate one, the wizard automatically proceeds. The final panel should show us connected to the desired network. If there are any issues, an exclamation mark will appear next to the network listing. I know there seems to be a lot of work involved, but really, when I'm not going through all of the background and options, connecting to wireless networks is fairly quick and easy. The biggest challenge people usually have is not having the correct security key or knowing which wireless network they should connect to. You should be able to identify both of these from your help desk, your hotel clerk, your coffee shop barista, your neighbor, your parents, your spouse, your roommates, whichever the case may be.